Welcome to St. Cecilia's Parish, and thank you for joining us this weekend. Today, we observe Second Sunday of Easter, the Divine Mercy Sunday. The readings for today's Mass may be found in the Missalettes on page 244. Please be respectful to the Lord in our midst and those around you by turning off your cell phone or placing it in the vibration mode so that it is not a distraction to others. Thank you for your consideration. The intention for our Mass this afternoon is for Norman Richard. Please stand and greet the Lord who gathers in our midst as he makes us one as members of, the holy, of his holy body. Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon, everybody. Dear brothers and sisters, today we gather with great, great joy to celebrate the Sunday of Divine Mercy. My dear brothers and sisters, at the beginning of this Holy Mass, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you lead us to salvation by your Paschal mystery. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you renew us by the wonders of your passion. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you share with us your body to make us one with your Easter sacrifice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. God in the highest 
who in the every recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own increase we pray the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed by whose spirit they have been reborn by whose blood they have been redeemed for our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the Apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needed, needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Israel say, His 
mercy endures forever. Let the house of heaven say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he is my Savior. Joyful shouts of victory in the tents of trust. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become a cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, it is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. It's not A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Be with you. And with your 
with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. I am uh, incredibly blessed by my Catholic faith. And I don't know how many people know this. I know I have mentioned it before, but I was not raised a Catholic. As a convert to the Catholic faith in my adult years, there were probably two main things that were my biggest struggle. Now, the first was the veneration of Mary and the the elevated position that she has within the Catholic Church. And the second was the Eucharist. The body, the blood, the soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. I can tell you about Mary another time. But this transubstantiation, the fact that through the miracle of the consecration that common bread and wine become his body, his blood, that we eat these things, that from the moment of consecration that they would cease to be what they were and that every aspect of how we treat them after that point should reflect what they had become. That was hard for me. And I thought about it today because of our gospel. Our gospel made me think of belief as it relates to our Catholic faith. And belief in our Catholic faith led me to remember my struggles in catching up maybe with my peers 
who were already in the faith. Maybe a little bit like Thomas today, trying to catch up to his peers. One of the things that pushed me over the edge when it came to this belief was when I studied about the Mass itself, when I studied the prayers, and probably more importantly, when I studied the responses that we use to respond to the prayers during the Mass. Now there's a great many of us, I'm assuming, who simply say what we say <laughs> because it's the right thing to say at the time, and we may have even gotten ourselves to the point that we're not even thinking about the words that we're saying anymore. I also have come to realize that many of the responses that are associated with the Mass, some of them aren't even said anymore, it seems, by many people. I don't know if people are forgetting them or not, but that people do not fully participate in the Mass sometimes is a fact. But the one that got me, the response that drove it home for me, was when the priest elevates the host at the moment of consecration. When the priest says, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Now at that moment, when time almost stops, Every person is supposed to respond, even if only to themselves, with the words, my Lord and my God. Did you know this? And the same thing when the chalice is raised and the consecration occurs, my Lord and my God. The words of St. Thomas today in our gospel. And when St. Thomas spoke these words, it was a turning point in history. St. Thomas actually became the very first person to acknowledge Christ's full communion with God. Other people certainly had acknowledged that he was the Son of God, that he was the Messiah, that he was the Christ. But St. Thomas was the first to acknowledge him as God. St. Thomas would doubt it. Why is this important? Well, it's important because when Father elevates that host, when Father elevates that chalice, and he speaks those words, the moment of consecration is occurring, the miracle of the transubstantiation is happening, and it is entirely possible that there are people like me at one time who will look and who will not believe who will look and who will doubt, just like Thomas at one time doubted. You know, the Catholic faith, as I said earlier, has done almost nothing but save my life. Of give my life more meaning and more richness than anything that I otherwise could have done. And I say this telling you, knowing full well that there are times that I feel like maybe I'm being a little bit of a crappy Catholic. And if there are times that you feel that you maybe are being a crappy Catholic, I want to tell you that there is hope. And I also want to tell you that even if you think you're a pretty good Catholic, you can probably be a better one starting today, when that host is raised, when that chalice is raised, I want us all to raise our eyes and say to ourselves, my Lord and my God. Because when Thomas said it, 
It was his way of affirming belief in the resurrection. And it should be ours too. It should also be our way of affirming belief in the real presence of Jesus Christ in the form of bread and wine. It should also be our way of affirming belief in the entirety of what the Holy Catholic Church teaches. And you need to know that this truth can come to its fullness for every one of us who is willing to utter the words that Thomas couldn't even say until he had visual proof. That what we do here is true. That what we believe in our faith is right and that what we profess will save us. The Eucharist is one of those things like a double-edged sword. It is something that because of what we believe it is, it can actually draw more people to the Catholic faith than anything else. But it is also the one thing that is cited by those who leave the faith because they stop believing. We should pray daily for an increase in faith in the Holy Eucharist, not just for those who are not Catholic, but for those of us who are trying to remain faithful. Because each and every one of us are potential victims of doubt or of disbelief at any moment of any day. And mostly because, as Jesus says in the Gospel today, blessed are those who come to believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For as man, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Like the early community of believers, let us be of one heart and one mind as we call upon the Lord to satisfy the needs of all. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church, that we may strive to build a world where everyone cares for the common good, where no one is needy, and where everyone's material needs are satisfied. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of nations that they may work for justice and reconciliation within their countries and regions, seeking an end to conflict and discord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have sinned and feel that they are beyond mercy. 
that they may be truly remorseful and come to know the unbounded mercy of our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray that we may be an instrument of peace in our nation and in our community, especially between those who are divided by race, gender, class, or politics. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for Abbot Xavier Connolly of St. Benedict's Abbey, for Rita Cannon, Maurice Doucette, and for all those who have died recently. And at this Mass, we pray for the repose of the soul of Norman Richard. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray also for all of our own personal intentions, which we reveal now in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, you never fail to give us another opportunity when we have failed, when we have sinned, when we have turned away from you. Embrace us in your loving arms with the comfort of your divine mercy. Hear this and all our prayers and grant them in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Pray now, my dear brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an end in happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> Blessed is 
who comes in the name of the Lord, who so Right, rightly gives you praise for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. For our Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her blessed spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Cecilia, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. We please to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. Your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered through all the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, today we remember Norman Richard. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. It's of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the, to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, my son. King of heaven, the glorious King, 
or death today rose triumph on in Alleluia Alleluia Easter morn at break of day, the faithful women went their way to seek the tomb where Jesus lay. Alleluia! Alleluia! An angel clad in white they see Who sat and spoke unto the three Your Lord has gone to Galilee Alleluia Alleluia That night the apostles met in fear. Among them came their Lord most dear, and said, My peace be with you here. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. I just wanted to, uh, to reinforce uh, an invitation. Even though Lent is over, the Men's Rosary Group is still going strong every Wednesday at 7 p.m. So to all men of our parish, uh, if you want to join us every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for about 27, 25 minutes to pray the rosary, you're more than welcome. So this coming Wednesday, 7 p.m. here in the church. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Is a whiteness in God's mercy like the whiteness of the sea. There is a kindness in His justice which is more than liberty. There is welcome for the We.